Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. I want to talk about opiate history from wonder drug to abuse drug. Wonder drug to abuse epidemic of these drugs. There's a long history, my friends, of opiate addiction in the United States. The FDA and the CDC have started taking steps to address the opiate abuse epidemic. This was on CNN. The abuse of opioid, opioid, opiates, including prescription pain, pain, pain killers, drugs like heroin, is something the United States has struggled with since the early 1900s. But it's a problem that keeps coming back, my friends. Now, federal agencies are trying to tackle the problem in difficult ways. The Centers of Disease Control and the Prevention recently issued guidelines for prescribing opiates for chronic pain, part of an effort to push doctors to prescribe pain medication responsibly. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced the immediate release of opiate painkillers such as oxycodone and fentanyl will now have to carry a black box warning about the risk of abuse and addiction and overdose death. To understand how we got to the current uh, academic, let's take a look back. In the 1900s, early 1900s, morphine and, creation, uh, and the creation of pain management, Civil War veterans whose injuries were treated, excuse me, injuries were treated with morphine were among those hooked on opiates at the turn of the century. But drugs were already on the scene and being consumed at alarming rates along uh, with uh, other things way before the war. Let's do this here for a minute. This came directly from Mark Kionis, a scholar who studied drug abuse during the Civil War. In 1998, the Bayer Company started production of another opiate, heroin, on a commercial scale. From its first clinical trial, it was considered a wonder drug, and the use spread uh, as addicts discovered that it, uh, its effects be amplified by injecting it. Doctors must lead us out of our opiate abuse academic. Kimberly Johnson, director of the Center of Substance Abuse Treatment at the Substance Abuse and Mental Cell Health Services Administration, said that in the early, early 1900s, there wasn't much known about poppy uh, uh, seeds. Drugs like heroin were used as cough suppressants. They are effective pain relievers, but they're also very, very addictive. By the 1920s, doctors were aware of highly addictive nature of opiates and tried to avoid treating patients with them. Heroin became illegal in 1924. World War II was the turning point for doctors treating pain as doctors worked to treat severely injured soldiers. Anesthesiologists opened nerve block clinics in the 1950s and 60s to manage pain without having to resort to surgery. In 1960, um, it also was utilized to maintain the uh, surgery process, according to history published in the Journal of American Medical Association. 1970s, 80s, and early 90s, a change in thought drug use in the United States escalated so much that in the 1970s, President Gerald Ford set a task force to study the problem. It recommended that the Drug Enforcement Administration and the Customs Service focus less on intercepting marijuana and cocaine traffickers and more on heroin. By the mid and late 70s, when Percocet and Vicodin became on the market, doctors had long been taught to avoid prescribing highly addictive opiates to patients. Should or should you, shouldn't you, a patient's guide to painkillers, you should, uh, should you or shouldn't you, is, is something that you need to ask yourself constantly. But 11-line letter printed on the New England Journal of Medicine in January 1980 pushed back the popular thought that using opiate, opiates to treat chronic pain was a risky situation. In it, Jane Porter and Dr. Herschel Jick mentioned that their analysis of 11,882 patients who were treated with narcotics had unbelievable results. They wrote that the development of addiction is rare in medical patients with no history of addiction. Jake told the Washington Post in 1977 that less than 1% he studied died from reaction of the drugs. I think very serious adverse reactions are about as infrequent as could possibly expect given the enormous amount of exposure to drugs. 
patients with terminal illness started being treated more with prescription opiates and doctors and researchers wanted to look at treating patients with chronic pain. Six years later, a paper by pain management specialist Dr. Russell Portnell chronicled 38 patients treated with opiates for non-cancer pain. Two of them had issues with addiction to the drug, but he included or concluded that opiate maintenance therapy can be a safe, uh, uh, solitary, and more humane alternative to surgery or not treating the patient with chronic pain. The studies by Portnoy and others created discussion in 1990s around making pain treatment a number one for all patients. 90s around, think about that, 90s around making pain medication a priority for patients. Johnson of the Center of Substance Abuse Treatment said that after heroin epidemic in 1990s, or 70s, doctors were concerned about the abuse of opiates in the 80s and things started to shift in the 90s. People started talking about pain as a fifth vital sign, Johnson said. There was a real push to do a better job of treating pain. 96, the birth of oxycodone. Purdue Pharma starting testing oxycodone as a long-term painkiller in 94, and it went on the market in 96. In the early 90s, the number one painkiller prescription filled at U.S. pharmacies increased 2 million to 3 million each every year, according to the National Institute of Drug Abuse. From 95 to 96, the number of prescriptions jumped by 8 million. 98, Purdue Pharma created a video promotion called I Got My Life Back. It followed six people who suffered from chronic pain and were treated with oxycodone. The company gave out 15,000 copies of this video to be used uh, in uh, doctors' waiting rooms. They don't wear it out. They go on working. They do not have serious medical side effects, a doctor featured in the video said. So these drugs, which I repeat are our best strongest pain medication, should be used much more than they are for patients, for the patients in pain. A year after the video came out, the overall number of opiate painkiller prescriptions filled jumped by 11 million. Purdue Pharma took out ads for oxycodone in medical journals across the nation in 2000. Seven years later, the company and three of the executives will be charged with misbranding its drug and downplaying the possibility of addiction. Three executives pleaded guilty, and the company settled on U.S. government with the U.S. government of 600. And 35 million. A spokesman for Purdue Pharma said that the company's products represents less than 2% of all opiate prescription and that Purdue has led the industry in creative medicines with uh, abuse deterrent properties. Opiate abuse and addiction is one of our top national health challenges, and that's why for a decade Purdue Pharma has undertaken efforts to address the crisis. 2001, a new standard making pain treatment. A priority came to the attention of the Joint Commission and Nonprofit that sets standards and accredits hospitals and medical centers. The group was created in the standard 2001. Pain is assessed in all patients, medical centers, and their doctors were required to examine the patient's pain levels, and the Joint Commission would give hospitals requirements for improvement if they fail to meet the standard. Though the standard makes no mention of treat pain, treat, treating pain from the drugs or even mentioning opiates as a treatment, the Joint Commission pr printed a book in 2000 for purchase by doctors as part of required education seminars. It all started changing in the year 2000 and t therefore there is no doubt that the widely held belief that short-term use of opiates has low risk of addiction was an important contributor to inappropriate prescribing patterns for opiates and subsequent opiate epidemic. Doctors are now on high alert. The makers of oxycodone released a newly formulated version of the drug, one with abuse deterrent within it, with the hope of making more uh, difficult to crush the abuse by snorting or injecting it. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine surveyed that more than 2,500 people who used oxycodone before after safely measures were added. It found that the anti-abuse measures were put in place. 35.6% of the people questioned admitted abusing drugs and alcohol. And then after the new one was uh, put in the market, there was a 24% decrease. Most people that we know don't use oxycodone and get high anymore. They use heroin. So we need to be aware that oxycodone, heroin, 
are killers. We need to be aware that they are very addictive. And you need to be aware if you have an addictive personality. Start today. This was the opiate uh, 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 seminar to teach you all about opiates. In 2016, we know of no other medication that kills per patients so frequently as heroin and oxycodone. Let's start today. Let's start today taking your life back. Call me at 844-405, and I promise I will help you take your life back.